Fans, we are back live with another edition of the Cheap Heat Productions Pro Wrestling Podcast. My name is Jack Kilby, Executive Vice President of the organization known as Great North Wrestling. We're just awaiting the arrival of the co-host for tonight, of course, Mr. Cheap Heat himself, Morris Shorthall. But we have with us the man for whom this show is named The Draw the icon himself, Mr. Mario Mancini. Mario, how are you today, sir? I'm good, Jack. Look, listen, um, as an icon, um, you know, there's there's something that go, goes along with my legend, my icon, that everybody must know. So pay, pay close attention to this very famous, iconish kind of famous thing. Are you ready? Yes, sir. It's my whole career. <laughs> what an icon. <laughs> well, without without you, sir, there, there wouldn't be the careers of a numerous Hall of Famers. Of which today I wanted to speak to you later on about not necessarily a Hall of Famer, but uh, an individual that that you gave his first match in the WWF to, and that would be no, not not the usual suspects, but uh, one Ted Arcidi. So we'll get into that if time permits in uh, in the moments to come. But first of all, I wanted to take a second to discuss the passing of. Uh, a, a legendary figure in professional wrestling, both as a main event talent in uh, Georgia, Jim Crockett promotions, et cetera, but also uh, perhaps more remembered for his booking and office work, uh, simultaneously booking a couple of territories at the same time. And I would be speaking about the one and only Ole Anderson, who passed away last, uh, well, I guess it was uh, an hour or so, uh, before Raw went on the air. And what I found interesting, Mario, back to a WWEF connection, is that WWF actually acknowledged and put a graphic up about the the passing of uh, Oli and just wanted to get your thoughts on that, considering that this may be a harbinger of the fact that Mr. McMahon is out for good out of the organization, given the famous story, uh, which I'm sure you're probably aware of, when Vince offered him uh, an opportunity to come and work for him, uh, the Black Saturday affair when Oli uh, was uh, taken out of the the time slots there in uh, Georgia Championship Wrestling, and he told Vince to f off. And several weeks uh, later, his wife. So, just uh, get your thoughts on on all of that, sir. Unfortunately, and it, it's a big loss on my part that I never had the opportunity to meet Oli Anderson. Um, of course, I've worked with Arn <laughs> and Tully, uh, uh, Harley Race, Terry Funk. And, and I throw those names out because they're associated with that kind of territory, you know. Absolutely different wrestlers. Different. Um, and, and and their philosophies were, were different. But Ole Anderson legend i mean uh royalty wrestling royalty come on he, the original four horsemen um and and he did a lot more as as a wrestling promoter and and listen the guy was outspoken and um and he he did what he wanted to do and and the thing about oli is we all loved oli because guys my age or a guy like you know a guy like uh harley race and and Arnie Anderson and Tully and Wyndham and all those guys because he believed in what I believe in. That's old school wrestling. You know, he didn't put up with any bullshit or anything. And it's a big loss to the wrestling community. And uh, he, he was just gigantic in the wrestling business. Um, just just huge, Ole Anderson. So we lost, we literally lost a legend you know, a true, a true legend. Um, somebody who, who truly is iconic in, in, in the wrestling business, you know. Um, it, it's just 
I I always hate to hear about the passing of that uh, generation because it it seems like you know um, they are they're the last kind of bridge to the the pro wrestling that uh, I grew up uh, loving, especially all the time I spent in the south in in Crockett territory, and I know Ole got a lot of. Um, <clears throat> rather, he was a polarizing figure for a number of reasons. But I think if if you read his book um, that came out about 2002, 2003, I recently got a copy of it. It's, it's fairly difficult to get a hold of, and I'm about halfway through it. You can see that he had a real love for, for the actual business. And, and when things started to go the way that they, they did and move away from a – uh, a more uh, serious uh, sports-based uh, product to to whatever we have today, whatever you want to call it today. Whatever you want to call it is correct. <clears throat> whatever you want to call it today, uh, aside from some independence, um, I, I think that uh, he will be regarded as uh, one of the most uh, accomplished minds in the in the business. Highly intelligent. I mean, to to wrestle and book in two territories uh, uh, on a main event level. I mean, that says it all. So um, yeah, I was uh, personally sad to, to get that news. And I would encourage folks, if you can get a hold of his book, uh, it's, it's definitely a good one. It's called inside out how corporate America destroyed professional wrestling. But I see after some technical difficulties, Morris, Mr. Cheap Heat has arrived, sir. Welcome to, the Mario Mancini show. Thank you, Jack. And thank you to Mario for having me on his show today. <laughs> you guys are ball breakers. Mario, thing. before, before we, Go before, ahead. before we get started, Mario, there's just someone here in the chat that's mentioned that, um, he's looking for you on news weekly. He's seen you and Paul Roma there. Do you want to fill in the fans on what you two guys have been up to? Uh, it, it, new, he, talking he's about. talking about news nation. Um, Roma and I did that show, which which has sparked so many other things now. I mean, our phones won't stop ringing. One major network has nailed us down. Um, we're waiting for contracts. So, um, you know, would like to get you guys involved, of course. You know how the wrestling business is. You take care of your own, you know. <laughs> So, um, you know, um, so that's News Nation. I don't know if you can catch it on YouTube. Um, I don't know if you can. There's a website you can watch back episodes of News Nation. Um, I have one thing that I was exposed to around about 38 years ago that I've never mentioned, and I can't because I'm not going to. Uh, you know, I make decent money, but I don't have enough money to pay off a lawsuit, and I'm not saying it. So, um, you know, I think the point of Banfield, who was the host of the show, was to try to get that out of me, and he just couldn't do it. Um, you know, the funny part, gentlemen, is when I did New York Magazine, and I, I did it for Rita Chatterton, and... At the same time, there were those three or four other women that were making the same claim. Everybody was jumped on the ship. There were four or five different women, including Rita, making claims at that time in 2022 or whatever. Yeah, it had to be 2022 because that's when they lifted the statute in the state of New York for uh, sexual harassment. So... Um, After I did that article, well, during at the end of that article, I said, um, you know, there's there's worse stuff than that. And then when he the allegation of him defecating on a woman's head, you know, I came on cheap heat and she quoted me Banfield from cheap heat. And she said, you said. He's a narcissistic sociopath. You know, uh, she cut the real nasty stuff out. I said, you know, um, 
so she tried to get it out of me because the 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 funny part about it at the end of that New York Magazine article, I said, "There's worse stuff than that." And then he defecates in somebody's head, and then I go, "There's worse stuff than that." And people are like, "What?" I'm like, "There's worse stuff than that." worse stuff than that so um you know everybody's trying to, i just got a call a half hour ago from empire somebody from empire media saying oh we want we we want you to come on a documentary i said well i'm kind of sewn up by a major company right now so um, <laughs> waiting for a contract so i really can't deal with anybody else you know and, um, you know, not to get off the subject um, or, or switch gears so quickly, but this is a segment of the show. It's called Guilt Jack Kilby. So last Tuesday, I get frustrated, right? I start, start getting mad because when you get somebody in a headlock, you snatch a headlock. You snatch a headlock. You know, I always make a, sometimes they laugh, sometimes they, sometimes they don't. I go, this is the only time in your life that can, you can use the word snatch and it's not sexual. So I use snatch a headlock. Okay. Now, Maurice, why am I saying that? Because I have students in the school that go to lock up and they curl into a headlock. It's not a curl. You don't curl into a headlock. Okay. It's like you a lock. hook. Yeah. You lock up. Okay. The hand goes behind the neck. The right foot goes out maybe six inches. You pull in and the guy follows into your rib cage and you snatch the headlock. Well, I locked up. My hand went behind his head, his neck. I stepped to the right and I snatched him into a headlock and ripped every rhomboid in my thoracic spine. Oy. The pain for a week, Advil wouldn't touch it. Nothing. My Cairo was in Texas visiting his father. My When I went home, my daughter was working when I'm working, my daughter was home. Finally, by Friday, three days later, we connected. And I had her walk on my back and it went, brr, brr, brr. and thank God, by Sunday, I was okay. I snatched a headlock and I ripped the muscles in my mid back. Jack. Has this has this set you has this set you back for the Great North Wrestling comeback or is are we still good? <laughs> no, we're <laughs> that's that's because <laughs> you learned under the greats, the great hookers and shooters, and, and you can't phone it in, Mario. I, I, I admire that. I just... That's if the, the big TV company let him go now. If the big TV company let him go to Great North Wrestling, you may put that in your contract, but you could appear oh, here and there. But well, listen, here's 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 the deal. Um, I'm hoping Jack can work something out because the way my life is is working out. Um, when it comes to the wrestling business, is you know it, it's turning out that Roman's greatest tag team partner outside of the ring is me. And he's mine. And, it, 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 you know, it's just like News Nation. I said, I don't want to come on unless you have Roman. I said, you want Roman? He was a bigger star than I, I was. He was in WrestleMania. And he was exposed to, to more than I was exposed. I told the truth on there. Tell me about Vince McMahon. Well, <laughs> let me tell you something. Other than in eight years talking to him maybe four times, and and that's not including the time I spent on Tuesday Night Titans. What kind of major? Sure, I, I can go on and bullshit. I don't do that. Jack, what kind of conversation is a jobber going to have with Vince McMahon? 
You know what I mean? What kind of conversation are you going to have? I've had several with them about different things, which I've gone over on this podcast. But, you know, the, the you know what I said on News Nation was that doesn't mean my uh, I didn't see what I, I, I saw and my ears weren't open, but didn't necessarily have a, a close relationship with Vince McMahon. Roma did. Roma did. Um, so it, it, it turns out that, you know, anything I do, you know, um, even these wrestling conventions and everything, I don't, you know, it's, it's the Rome and I are doing everything together, everything. So, um, the reason why I'm, I'm mentioning this is because when I get to Canada after I lace my boots and my trunks are on, I'm all taped up, basically ready to go. I have to lay on the floor and somebody's got to stretch me. My hamstrings, everything's got to get stretched. Everything. I, I, everything, or else it's just not going to work that well. Now, I used to get stretched out by one of the guys in my wrestling school, but, and he knew how to do it well. Unfortunately, he passed away. So, um, I, uh, I just need to be, I need to be stretched out so I don't pull any rhomboids anymore. That was just snatching a headlock. That, that, that was it. So. Maybe we could get uh, Muffy in, Jack, for that, to be his personal trainer. Well, I will say this. Uh, I would more than uh, welcome uh, having uh, Mr. Roma on the show, do some uh, appearances, legend uh, work, et cetera, et cetera, and I'll definitely be – reaching out to him as, as I told him when, when we spoke on, on this show, I, I was a fan of his uh, back in the day. I had the opportunity to watch him wrestle live at Maple Leaf gardens as a kid, a couple of times, as well as uh, you know, his work with power and glory. I thought they were robbed. They, they should have been champions, uh, just bullshit politics. Uh, and I think in WCW, he uh, got uh uh, uh, not exactly the most uh, fairest of shakes there either. But I, bottom line is, I have a lot of respect for for Mr. Roma, and would most definitely uh, have some discussions with him about coming in because this is going to be a very, very special show. It's the first time in over a decade that quality professional wrestling has been in this community, Napanee, Ontario, and uh, we're going to start clicking very very shortly on the promotional part and it's already a loaded card with mario being on it and uh, a lot of the other surprises i'm in talks right now with another wwf legend about coming in as well and that's going to be a little bit of a surprise until we uh, nail that down and of course uh renee dupree is committed to if he's got the guts to show up and uh, get his rematch against the Canadian champion, Magna McLaren. And you know what? I've got a memory that doesn't forget things. And I haven't forgotten what he did to me in November. He knows it. I know it. And he just better be on his A game. So it's there. They're, they're going to be scores settled there and uh, some very, very memorable moments. So Paul Roma would definitely be the icing on that cake. Well, I'm going to make this really easy for you to make you very happy. Because Scott Wilder wants to jump in the car. Perfect. So Scott ends up jumping in the car. He's and he's going to end up handling Roma. Yeah, for the autog autograph session and stuff. So um, it it might just be like a base a base kind of guarantee, and then um, whatever he's going to make with Scott Wilder, hopefully. Um, but um, I, I think we're going to be able to work it out, and I think it'll be very affordable. Um, uh, Nikki Duke is uh, coming up. She's going to be in the car. Uh, so, How's her it, recovery going? Her recovery is going very well. Her good, recovery good. is going very well. She's, she, of course, she's very young, which helps. Um, and she's an extraordinary athlete, which helps. So... Um, you know, she's going to be coming to Canada, uh, you know, for the girls match there. And um, so uh, we just have to make sure 
Uh, we have a head count in the car. It looks like we're going to have to get like one of those passenger vans or so <laughs> and just haul our asses to Canada. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's a six man tag team match because I can't, I can't wrestle singles matches anymore. So that's all uh, good. Oh yeah. Well, I, what, what I'm going to pride myself on is pleasing Jack with the psychology, of course. Um, not so much the wrestling, but the psychology of the whole thing. So that's what really makes it work. As I say to the students, you think mo learning the moves is the hard part. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's knowing when to do what, where, and why, you know, so, um, you know, hopefully everything everything uh, goes well. But everybody's very Jack. Everybody is very excited to go. Jack. Everybody is pumped up. I mean, crazy excited. So of course, my goal as the old man, and my goal as owner of Paradise Alley Pro Wrestling, is the old man's going to leave, and it's up to you that night whether Jack's going to call you back. So you go back up there. You might not be with the old man, but at least you'll be going back there, you know, but that's up to the promoter. You got to bring it. The promoter has to look and say, Hey, listen, I think I can do something with this person, you know, and I, I you know, this, this, this person got a lot of heat or they got a lot of gas tonight. So, you know, um, it all it all depends. They're, it's it, the fate is in their hands. I'm I'm not going to ask for a favor. They have to earn it. You know they have to earn it. So. And knowing the the type of uh, one of the other components that uh, I pride myself on in the new uh, incarnation of Great North Wrestling, and not to say that it wasn't there in the past, is that we we run a very friendly, professional locker room folks have a good time there we're talking uh you know individuals that have come in from other provinces from new york state elsewhere we just have a, a really good time we put on a really good show and there's there's no bs we had you know like like any organization you know there there there's got to be one cancer that's been cut out of the locker room so they won't be back but other than that uh we we run a very uh friendly professional uh organization and uh, that that word has gotten out and, and knowing how you run uh your school and and your track record i'm sure your students will fit in there as well like a glove oh they'll be calling you sir believe me they 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 know they're very educated on and, and you know for the younger kids too when the parents come in i go look just know this you think that there's a lot of discipline in the martial arts. I said it pales in comparison to professional wrestling. Pales in comparison. So um, I'm looking forward to it. So uh, I just got to stay limber, you know, stay a little, stay a little limber. I'll be going back in the ring tonight. So um, good man. Yeah, I'll be going back in there tonight. So. Before we leave the topic of this card, I, I almost forgot, <clears throat> but uh, didn't really, but almost forgot, uh, my good friend will be coming to this show as well. We've just put the details together to defend, for the first time in over 10 years, the Hardcore Road Trip Heavyweight Championship. I would be speaking about none other than the Kingpin, the King of the Streets, Mr. Baldies himself, Angel Medina, will be on this card. Wow. Excellent. Wow, that's great. So we're going to have a loaded show, folks. Uh, the yep. link will be out there. March will be the month when uh, you're going to start hearing a lot about this show and your ability to be a part of it. Mario, we have to get down to some serious business. Go ahead, sir. You called me when I was in Manchester, not last Sunday, the Sunday before, about, what's that, nine days ago now. And then we were supposed to do a show last week, but we couldn't because we were actually both ill. But now we're both raring to go again. But it was in, I didn't realize that Rita, I seen that Rita Chatterton had went back inside the ring and done a match and 
I was delighted for her, you know, and I wrote on her Facebook saying, oh, great to see you back in the ring, etc., etc. Never really thought anything of it. Went to Manchester, got a phone call from you. And then I realized that something else that I'd seen over the weekend, which wasn't as positive, was on the same show. And um, it didn't really sit well with you and a lot of people I know. I, since then, dumped it. I dumped the issue because the promoter stood strongly by his decision, number one. Number two, I spoke to you. Mm -hmm. And then I spoke to Scott Wilder. And um, I love being (laughs) Mario Mancini. Um. But there's another part of me and another part of my brain that uh, does a lot of different thinking. And my thinking was this. If there's no cooperation and there's no evidence and there's no conviction, my mouth is shut. Nobody has the right to say anything. Nothing. So I totally shifted um, you know, I called Rita cause, you know, I said, look, I've, I've looked after you this long. I'm not going to stop. And then, um, you know, at first she was kind of upset and then I talked to her too. And, you know, there's really nothing there, but word of mouth. And after I went through what I went through with a certain individual um, stating that, that that making an artificial intelligence voice of a female saying I sexually harassed her and it, it's not a real human being and saying that I claimed that I was in the military or and all this other stuff that wasn't true. Well, you know, I'm not a hypocrite, so I'm, I don't even want to, I don't even really want to address it because to me, there's no issue. And, uh, hopefully that individual will get other opportunities. Um, I, I think it's horrible if, if, you know, your, your reputation gets damaged, you know, that's what all defamation is about, right? Somebody that tries to defame your reputation and you sue them, you know, and what's the defense to def- defamation? The truth. And if nobody can prove the truth and back up that stuff, then that person wins. So um, I don't I don't see conflict anymore. So, yeah, the WWE, when that guy was there, did find no evidence of wrongdoing and kept them on tv for over two and a half years so yeah they, they still released him in the end but he, he did come out at a time where there was a lot of releases and maybe it was just the, the easy well, option at the time but as <laughs> but as you say there is nothing out there legally no, no. To, so as uh, hulk hogan would say as hulk hogan would say quite often at the end brother we're all jobbers <laughs> <laughs> in the end, brother, we're we all we all, we're all jobbers in the end, you know. So, um, yeah, you know, eventually they, you know, WWE releases everybody. But, um, who is this? Because uh, I don't really know. Um, this is for you, Maurice, because you're always up on this stuff. It's been told to me, Mm -hmm. set aside the WWE and set aside TKO, that this Ari Emanuel has bought everything lock, stock, and barrel? I don't actually know about that. Do you want to know about that, Jack? To my understanding, he is the, uh, the, uh, the, the, top of the pyramid for both companies 
uh, UFC and WWE. Okay. There, there's uh, you know under bosses, so to speak, in terms of UFC and uh, WWE, which was Vince, uh, but uh, he is the absolute um, top of the mountain and has. He's been, the head of the table. He's the head of the table. Not to use that uh, analogy, but he. There's some question about his knowledge of the allegations surrounding Mr. McMahon dating back to uh, when the, the merger occurred. And there has been some speculation specifically with Meltzer that uh, he was aware of um, what was in the, the wind, so to speak, and had the, the uh, view that uh, the WWE and the merger would not be complete without McMahon, but then that was July when the the uh, acquisition took place. But then in October, uh, they released a statement saying that uh, they thought that McMahon could be a, a corporate risk because of said uh, investigation going on by the Fed. So it's uh, again, it's all conjecture and speculation, but he is the the head uh, top dude in the combined company entity known as TKO. Okay. All right. So I, from my understanding, he's the one that told Vince to leave. Yes. So um, I, I, he's fairly young, this guy. To my so, understanding, he and uh, uh, the other con, Nick Khan, said that uh, – when the uh, before the rumble, when uh, Slim Jim pulled out the day before, that uh, it would be best for all involved if he resigned, which is uh, of course what he ended up doing. But it was uh, Emmanuel and uh, Mr. Khan, not yeah. Tony. No, um, I mean, I guess these guys make Tony Khan look like he only has a couple bucks. <laughs> <laughs> combined, combined, yes, but. The um, at the at the end of the day, the uh, if you, if you look at the history of that that company, I mean, Vince got away with a lot, and the corporate culture was what it was before it went public. So going public was both, you know, financially the the most tremendous. Vince went from a millionaire to a billionaire, as well as uh, others. I'm thinking of Kevin Dunn and and whatnot. But uh, then when it became a publicly traded company, you're, you're involving uh, a whole new playing field. And, and in the corporate structure, wrestling was and always has been uh, a tough fit. And I think it just uh, finally uh, caught up with Mr. McMahon. Well, yeah, I mean, <laughs> um, I've said it a lot of times before, you know what I mean? That, that, you know, when it was his game, when it was his ball, you know, even though what he was doing was wrong and the harassment and this and that and the other thing, um, it was in-house. You know, once you start going public and involving other people, you have other people the answer to, you know, it's, it's like when I was talking to these, um, these producers for this enormous company, um, I said, listen, give me, I'll give you an example. I mean, two days after Snuka killed that woman, we all knew it. And then what, um, how many years ago, you know, I mean, Snook has passed now. What was it? 10 years ago or eight years ago, Jimmy Snook committed murder on like, uh, 2015, I believe the, uh, charges. Uh, finally yeah. came. I'm like, I'm like, uh, duh. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, so it, it's, I mean, that's how, that's how everything was swept under the carpet. That's why um, I'm talking to really good people right now, and they seem they're very tenacious, very tenacious. So um, that's why this thing I won't speak about, I'm like, 
you know, it's up to them. It's up to them to to find these people. And this is why uh, Roma and I always say, um, you know, when are they? When is anybody coming forward? So, um, there's there's a lot, a lot. There's a ton more out there. There's there's a ton more. Out I heard there. that they've. I heard that they've got something big to drop WrestleMania week as well. Now I don't know what it is, but that's the talk at the moment. They seem to always drop these things when there's a big event coming up. Well, they oh, they want to try to squash it. See, that's the joke of which it. they won't. No, and 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 Morris, that's the that that's that's the joke of it. See, and 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 that's why Vince is the way he is, right? What did they call John Gotti, the Teflon Don, right? No matter what happens, Vince. No matter if 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 Duggan and the Sheik get caught in the same car, no no matter if there's a steroid trial, no matter if Ring Boys got molested, no matter if Mel Phillips is playing with a, a nine-year-old's toes, there's always a sellout. He doesn't pay the price. There's not like, you know, and, and, and I hate to be so nostalgic, but if not for Babe Ruth, I don't know if, if my country would have Major League Baseball. Babe Ruth saved baseball. When, when, the, when the White Sox, or should I say the Black Sox, fixed the 1919 World Series, the public wasn't interested in baseball anymore. They thought it was a bunch of shit. They, they didn't they didn't believe in baseball anymore because they they all got accused of throwing the World Series. Babe Ruth came in and when he started exploding, he he saved baseball. You know, it's it, it, so we're, we are not of a society to say he, he did what he defecated on somebody's head. He did and he passed her around. He did what? Hey, you got our tickets to WrestleMania? Yeah, I got them in my pocket. Terrific. No, the, 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 nobody's going, we're going to boycott this thing. Jack? Well, I I was just thinking as, as you were speaking and you being a, a wrestling historian and, and having a, you know, a pr appreciation for, you know, the territory days. Why why is it that it seems to me that New York has been the epicenter of at least in the modern era we're not going back to Toots Mond and Farmer Burns and et cetera et cetera but in the modern 1960 on uh era of wrestling it seems like no other territory and organization has been the epicenter of scandal after scandal after scandal after scandal after scandal and I know Grizzly Smith was doing his thing in uh, in the Carolinas and elsewhere. And, uh, you know, th there were um, incidents, you know, of uh, malfeasance, what have you, in, in other territories and in other times. But it seems the names that you just rattled off there, uh, Terry Garvin, Patterson, Phillips, uh, Rita's case, uh, the the. Ashley Macero, like on and on. It seems to be that Vince McMahon, wherever Vince McMahon was in the modern era, Snuka, of course, wherever Vince McMahon was, there was this this uh, really atrocious uh, conduct happening, and it seemed to be that it started with him, and it was condoned by him, and others took advantage of that environment. Or am I just over uh, simplifying? Uh, my point is that uh, professional wrestling has always had, you know, a reputation of being, you know, somewhat shady from the carnival, blah, blah, blah. But I can't think of a, of a more deviant sort of uh, territory or organization than New York, where McMahon Jr. was. Well, like, like any other business, right? Um, the owner sets the pace. The owner is, is the one that sets the climate right so 
Jack, what we had, what what the not what I had. I wish. Oh my God, I wish. So many stories from Johnny Rods and Jose Luis Rivera and Jose Estrada. You know, so many stories from those guys about the old man. So you go 1983 back, and we had a very – and who set that tone? Vince McMahon Sr. We had a very friendly wrestling business. You know, they were able to call up – Vern Gagne could call up Vince and go, hey, can I get Andre? Sure. We'll send Andre to you. So Andre would go, you know, hey, can can we get Bob Backlund down here? Yeah, we'll send Bob Backlund to you. Hey, can you send Dusty Rhodes up here? Yeah, we'll send Dusty to you, Vince. Sure, Dusty could work the garden. Very nice, very, very nice business. And then just before I broke in, just before I broke in, the old man dies. And I hear from Jose Luis Rivera and all these guys, he loved us. He went out of his way for the jobbers. And he booked us. I never got the experience. I never got the experience. Vince, Vincent K came in. And he was motivated motivated by power and greed. And you have to remember, since he was a young man in military school, who is he? Who was he in military school with? Johnny V. Luscious Johnny V. Vince held his ass out the window. Big trouble. Big trouble. You're going to get kicked out of military school. So they investigate it and they go, who was it? And Johnny V goes, it was me. He got kicked out. He took the rap for Vince, you know. So my point is he was doing that stupid shit back then. At, you know, the mo one of the most frustrating moments of my wrestling career was when that interview was over at TNT and he looked over at us and said I was kind of hoping that the set didn't stay in one piece but okay and I looked at Roma this 18 year old Mario Mancini looked over at Roma and said if I knew he wanted us to destroy the fucking set I would have done it I would have done it. You guys have no idea how much regret I have for Tuesday Night Titans. Tuesday Night Titans is very edited. Very edited. Roma and I were so green. And Lombardi was there for a while. And he just kept insulting us and insulting us and insulting us. You don't see that. It's edited. And I've laid in bed many nights, many nights, going, why didn't I just look over at him and go, you know, Lombardi, you got a big mouth. And he would have said, well, why don't you try to shut it, Mancini? And could have did something. But we didn't know what to do. We didn't know what to do. We were that close to Vince McMahon. So we didn't know what to do. We were scared. We were nervous. But there's a lot in that interview when Lombardi was just verbally attacking us. And we should have destroyed the set. You know what I mean? So um, if you watch a lot of early stuff, this is the way Vince got away with things too. If you watch a lot of early stuff with Vince and fans, 
and especially some wrestlers, they'll say, well, I didn't know. I thought the guy was just an announcer. I didn't know. The guy. I thought the guy was just an announcer. Because even when I was a kid, I would have never guessed. He looked like a dweeb. He looked like a some sort of, you know, Poindexter kind of guy. I mean, I didn't even know he had the physique he had. I was like, holy sh, he's bigger than the boys. Because he was frustrated because he wanted to work. He wanted to work. He wanted to work. And his father said, when you own the company and everybody's digging the ditch for you, you watch them dig a ditch. You don't grab the shovel and dig it with them. You own it. You don't dig the ditch. So, you know, from early on, and you got to remember something. Remember this too, how different the business could have been. And what a nice guy. And I was booked. He loved me. He loved me. He looked at me and he goes, work really hard in the ring, kid. I said, thank you so much. He loved me, George Scott. When I broke into the business, George Scott was the booker. George Scott was the booker. And shortly after I was in, he got fired and Pat became the booker. And Pat was the booker forever. So, you know, it's like Jack goes to the Morris, hey, listen, I want to hire Mario. You go, well, Jack, uh, Mario eats a lot, you know. Yeah, well, we make cookies here. He's going to eat all the cookies. No, 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 we're going to bring him in anyway. That's your decision. You know what I mean? You, you, you know, like Roma said, not me, because I looked like, you know, the Pillsbury Berry Doe guy, you know, but Roma said, here, you guys, basically, you're naked. We just have a pair of underwear on. Roma's physique, Jim Powers' physique, Rick Rude's, Warriors. You got Pat Patterson that eats a lot of cookies in the cookie working in the cookie factory. You know what I mean? So this is Vince's decision. He sets the tone for his company. You know, I'm kind of ashamed of myself because way back in the day, when I'd be interviewed and stuff, and when these social media podcasts came to light, I'd say, listen. Listen, you own a major company with thousands and thousands of employees. There's two things. One is called macro managing and the other one's called micro managing. Do you think Vince McMahon has time to micromanage? And I cover him. I try to cover him and he, they would end up going... Yeah, he couldn't know everything that was going on. He's kind of bit. I go, yeah, he, you know, he can't micromanage everybody. Like, Except he slept two hours a day. Listen, he, he knew who was working for him. He knew all the personalities. He knew what was going on. He knew, you know, well, he knew he knew what Mel Phillips was all about. He knew, you know, it was just. He he set the tone. He he's the one that made it the wild wild west. And, and as long as he was making money, it, if he just figured it was never going to come out, nothing was going to ever happen. But you know, it, it what are you going to do if 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 you own Walmart and you know you hire five people and they go Jack, these five people you just hired, yeah, well. All five of them have criminal records for larceny. Yeah, that's okay. And they start robbing the store. Vince hired people that started robbing the store. Mario, can you, do you think because of what you and Paul are doing, and this goes back a bit further as well, 
that it's very taboo within the business, you know, with the guys you, you were afraid before when you start doing this kind of thing and now it's going to a higher level. Can you see that causing problems between you and your peers or can you see it working in a positive light and letting more people come out with their stories? Well, now listen, I think more people come out with their stories. Mo, there's only a handful. And I made a TikTok because I got the clip of John Cena on Howard Stern. Disgusting. Disgusting. I stand by and support Vince McMahon because I love him. He's my friend. Yep, that's what he said. And when your friend's back is up against the wall, when his shit hits the fan, well, that's when you find out who your real friends are. I agree. I agree. An unexpected misfortune. Something financially somebody didn't expect. God forbid a physical ailment. You know, some sort of situation that just hit him in the face like like a brick that he didn't see coming. Not when you defecate on somebody's head. So I said what John Cena said was disgusting. Now, that's a shame because he's got more Make-A-Wish Foundation appearances than any any athlete in the history. He seems like a really nice guy. There's your exception. So, Maurice, if I'm making you, I don't know, $15 million a year, and they go, hey, that Mancini is a real son of a bitch, you're going to go, why? You're wrong. That guy's fantastic. You know what I mean? So we have a handful of guys. So we have... Cena. Taker's not going to say anything. He's not going to say one, anything one way or the other. Mick Foley kind of tap danced around it. Gee, wish something was done earlier. You know, these are guys that are paying their mortgage, going to the grocery store, you know, paying, you know, buying, making their car payments or buying cars off of wrestling money. These are very few and far between. Not even The Rock, not even Dwayne or Steve Austin. I I look at I look at Dwayne Johnson and Steve Austin Austin as exceptions to the rule. Because Dwayne Johnson is the biggest movie star in the world. His stepping stone was pro wrestling. So if he sucked as an actor, that would have been something on him because of his talent to excel and be the biggest movie star in Hollywood. That's on him. That's on him. That's his, he made that for himself. For himself. You know? Steve Austin. You can't make anybody else, Steve Austin. There's only one. Nobody else could have pulled that off. And, you know, he, during the Attitude Era, he might be the one that have really saved Vince's ass from the WCW. So in my mind, he did more for Vince than, than Vince did for him. You're not going to hear anything out of Steve Austin. Now let's go down the ladder. I have to drop names. I hate this. <laughs> Cuz they're my friends, man. They're so good. They're my friends. So I'm I'm not going to go off the business. I'm going to go off their personality. Tito Santana. Not that kind of guy. Tito. I think I love Tito so much. Because he's the closest personality to Strongbow that's still here. Sometimes I feel like talking to Tito's like talking to the chief. 
you know, and everybody knows what chief means to me, you know, everything. So, you know, Tito's like, that's not my business. You know, well, 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 you know, Vince, Vince pulled the dick off of somebody, put on a hot dog bun, he'd go, it's not my concern. It's not my business. Please leave me alone. You know what I mean? I, so Tito's, you're not going to get Tito. Valentine, his father was Johnny Valentine. He's he's wrestling royalty. He's blood. Old school. You don't talk. You don't do that shit. Not getting your head. Now, um, there's a list of other guys out there that Vince didn't deal with too well. From my era, that I'm working with this major company to to enroll to let them let them know who I think. You know, a guy like Jimmy Hart's not going to say anything. It was funny because Scott Wilder had whispered something in Jimmy's ear when we were in Maryland. And Jimmy just parted from him and said, brother, I don't say anything about anybody. I don't button anybody's business and I don't talk about anything about anybody. I keep to myself. So he confirmed that right there. That's Jimmy Hart. You know, he's not going to, you know, but there are other guys um in my era that um you don't think for the right amount of money david schultz isn't going to come on vince ruined his life and he lied to him and he lied to him stay in character there's this guy out here trying to kill our business stay in character stay dr d Um, Bret Hart's his own brand. You have professional wrestling, then then you have Bret Hart. Who is professional wrestling? Does he want to talk? I don't know. But it I think hurt. he distanced himself. I think he actually distanced himself a little bit from Vince last week, from what I read. So, oh, yeah. Who knows? So, you know, Bret. You know. Going to Bret Hart, you might, you know, is it, the same thing as saying, "Hey, somebody needs to go to the King," because that's Bret Hart. That's he. He's he is the business, you know. Um, so I, I, I don't know, I, I don't know, but there are a lot of guys out there um, that got screwed and feel they got screwed, you know, that know a lot of things, and they kept their mouth shut. And whether they want to keep their mouth shut now is up to them. You know what I mean? So, you know, this is this is what I'm saying. This is what I'm – this this is – you know, yeah, you know what? They're, they're, they're always – they always joked with me when I was going to law school, you know. They go, you become a lawyer, you're going to be the only broke lawyer we know because – I like to help people and I can't help, but if I owned the WWE right now, I'd be concerned about Virgil. I'd be concerned about Mike Jones. I'd be reaching out who's ever handling Mike Jones and say, where is he? Is he eating? Is he in a facility? I'm a billionaire. Damn it. Is he in a facility? Where is he? Well, no, he's he's in a wheelchair urinating his pants because he can't afford any. No, let's get him in a facility. Let him get taken care of. How about a call to Valentine? Hey, Greg, how you doing? How are you? Tell me how you are. Beefcake. You know, all these guys, Ordnorf passes away. Can I help you with the funeral expenses? Once you're done, you're done. Yeah, you know, yeah, you threw some cookies. 
Let's do a Legends house. Let's do a Legends night. Bring back some old timers. We'll be getting a payday here and there. Is it worth it? Is it worth it? You know, so, uh, you know, even Bruno, God forgive me, because he's the reason why I wanted to become a pro wrestler and he was my hero. And it's not, there's very few people in life that had a hero and could look somebody in the face and go, I was friends with him. It's almost impossible. Impossible. He had his stance on pro wrestling. He had his stance on Vince McMahon. But they even broke Bruno down with a million dollars to get him into the Hall of Fame. Bruno wasn't going to say no to the million. So with these, a lot of these guys, it all comes down to money. And Roma's right. I'm like, Roma, why? How come some of these guys aren't talking? He goes, Cause me and Cini, they still think their fucking phone's going to ring. I go, come on. Yes, they think their phone's going to ring and it's going to be Vince. That's exactly. That's exactly what I said to Paul Roma the other day when I, I texted him after I seen his TV appearance on Twitter and I said, fair play to you and Mario. I still think some of the guys are waiting on the call. Yeah, see, I, I know that call's never coming. That call's, that call's never, never. And, and I don't want the call, Jack. You know why? You know what my call would have been? Do you know, as Bruce Pritchard would say on his podcast, you know, if, if I need a serious job done, I'll just call Mario Mancini. We need you to come into uh, SmackDown. Yeah, for what? For brutal beating. Are you kidding me? That's what I would be called in for to get the living shit knocked out of me. They're not bringing me in there to, to put me over. They're going to have like five guys rip all oh, wear old clothes. They're going to tear them. And, and, you know what I mean? They, they would have called me in to get the shit knocked out of me. I'm not doing that. I did enough of it. You know, so I'm not getting a call. There's no job or wing to the Hall of Fame. They didn't say, look, we're putting you in three WWE encyclopedias. They didn't split that all with the boys. Hey, listen, we're going to give you 1% of every sale or a half a percent of every sale or a quarter percent. Or like Vin Vincent's usual royalty deals was, I think it was... A Half of one cent. That's what you got for royalty. Half of one penny. They won't even do that. So what are they? What are they? There, there's nothing. There, there's there, there's nothing. So so. I, I don't I don't care. I, I don't care. So the only thing I ever got out of that place when I left. God bless Tony Starson. Tony Starson started that job when I started. And she was in promotions. And they got rid of the promotions department 10 or 15 years. It doesn't even exist anymore. But I was able to see a kid in a wheelchair with his parents or a special needs kid. And I was able to call Tony Starson. She'd pick up the phone every time and say, I need a promotion package sent to this address. And she would fill it with action figures and eight by, autographed 8 by 10s and all kinds of wrestling goodies and, and send out a box. That was, that was my thing. And I called her up one day and I said, I need, she goes, Mario, there's, that's all gone. There's no more promotion department. It's gone. So I'm sure she's retired now. I hope so. It's been 40 years. So she's one of the few that survived and get, didn't get fired. You know, uh, you got to remember, I'm the Ed Cohen, Jim Troy era of wrestling. You walk in, you see big blonde Jim Troy there, the hockey player that he was. And, you know, Ed Cohen with that porn stash he's got sitting behind his desk. Um, You know what? Are you, what are you gonna do? We're gonna find out, gentlemen, very shortly. Who's gonna, who's gonna want to talk and who's not? And it's it's very it's very hairy because you you can't get paid. 
can I ask one question that won't that that won't spoil the project? Is it going to be like a TV deal in America, kind of a, on TV over there, or is this kind of a streaming thing? Or can you shed any light on that TV? So primetime TV. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. So it's in and and it's journalism. You can't pay for journalism. It's unethical. So not only do you have to convince the guys to talk, you got to convince them to talk for free. So, well, at the end of the day, Mario, you, you have to speak your truth, and those that are willing to speak their truths will. Those that are motivated by other things will not. But I, I would agree with your sentiment earlier that it's it's a travesty that a, a corporation, a company with those sort of financial means doesn't offer any sort of health insurance for for their folks. And, and that includes AEW, by the way that uh, said that they were going to off offer health insurance for their for their wrestlers too and so far none of that so well that's why i recommended to these kind people these kind producers get a hold of jesse ventura get him on because he's the one that tried to organize professional wrestling back in the day mm. he's the one that tried to get the health insurance and the 401ks and all that stuff and it didn't happen. I said, get him. Get him. He'll talk about that all day long. Um, so Chris, Chris Nowinski could be another good one. We were already talking about him the other day, Jack. Mm -hmm. You know, Chris Nowinski, Mario. He's he he uh studies head injuries in sports. He's the one who actually studied Chris Benoit's brain after he died and made all the dis discoveries about the the state of his brain, etc. So he's a good one. The well. Sports Legacy Institute. Yeah. Ex pro wrestler as well in WWF. Yeah, I mean mm -hmm. there's a lot to talk. There's a lot. There's a lot to talk about. I mean um there's Stephanie, Shane, Linda, Triple H, Bruce Pritchard, Shawn Michaels. Shawn Michaels. You know, what what's going to happen? I think all of them should go except one. And that's Triple H. I think it'd be a big mistake to get rid of him. Because I think in his heart, he loves this business so much. I think he loves it more than his father-in-law. That's depending on if he has nothing in the closet as well, of course. Of course, I don't listen. You hope it, not. Uh, well, listen. It, uh, it it was it was. I'll always say it was the wild wild west. I mean, it, it's hard. It it was hard. Did you did you hear what he said at the press conference a few weeks ago when they asked him about the the allegations? He said he didn't read it. So that's 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 not a good sign. That was yeah, actually the only bad piece of PR he's done, really. Yeah, no, I don't. You know, a lot of people said, you know, I didn't read the whole thing, but, you know, and, and, and sadly, the bullshit of that is you don't have to. You don't have to read the whole thing. There were text messages outlined that if you read those, you really didn't have to read the case that dropped your jaw enough. I'm sure he read the whole thing back to back. Well, listen, I think, I think he's got a good mind for the business. I think, um, I think it would be a mistake to get rid of him. Um, <clears throat> but I mean, how do you, how do you keep anybody with the last name of McMahon? How, how do you, you know what I mean? We're going in a direction. All right, so it's like Gucci. There's not a family member left in Gucci. It's all run by other people. The name's there. Mm. We're going in a direction where you can't even imagine where professional wrestling is going. Once 
they eliminate all of the wrestling people. It is not going to be professional wrestling. It is barely now. I was just going to say that when they're structuring their, their product, like a television show, episodic television. And if you look at not, I don't watch raw, but I, I do catch the reviews. It's, it's more 20 minute uh, promos uh, vignettes, and then they have one or two matches a night. That's not what I'm interested in, but apparently I'm uh, aged out of the product because it's making more money than ever. Right. You've got 2 million people watching a, out of three hours a combined 12 minutes of in-ring action. So you know what? I hear what you're saying, Mary, when I agree. There should be wrestling people involved in wrestling at the highest levels, but I think you're absolutely right. I think they're going to be out and I think it's going to be another episodic uh, soap opera-like television show with the ring being, uh, you know, just a, a trapping, right. a necessary trapping. It's just it, it's it's not gonna it's not gonna resemble anything, even it, like it is now. It's not gonna resemble anything like that. And you know what? The only hope for the real wrestling fans. The authentic wrestling fans, the people that want to see wrestling. You know, companies like Great North and Paradise Alley, they benefit from that because they go, hey, we can go here and see wrestling. You know, it's it's actually professional wrestling, not that stuff on TV. Because it's going to go somewhere where nobody ever thought it went. I mean, well, I... I they're going to cut away. I mean, they'll probably start cutting away to people's houses. You know what I mean? How they are, the, uh, uh, maybe wrestlers dating in their house and stuff like that. And they're not even like reality TV, like just a, like a prime time TV show, like a law and order. You know what I mean? And then like, just like you see the courtroom eventually in law and order and you see the wrestling ring. Yep. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely uh, again for those of us that uh, appreciated the the old school uh, phenomenon. It's it's definitely not a a positive element. But then again, they're they're not they're not targeting. Uh, we're not in the key demo, so to speak. And and uh, advertisers are saying, look, we're getting two million people to watch a thirty or forty minute uh, back and forth with an entrance and everything. And then again. 12 minutes total of matches uh, we're making bank doesn't matter but again you're right i think there is opportunity in that for independence to take advantage of at least trying to keep that that essential spirit of uh the business alive and everything cyclical and but we're forgetting about aew which has its own set of problems in that they, they do uh, aggressive parkour and uh, high spot after high spot with no psychology either. So I also lump them in to the not wrestling as I knew it either. And I don't like it as well. So I'm not trying to pick on WWE or uh, AEW. It's just, it's just the way that it, the way that it is. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. There is, there, there is some hope for TNA wrestling and, and that rebrand because they've always focused on wrestling to be fair to that company. They're not, of the level of those two, but I think it's one to keep an eye on for sure. Well, listen, as long as I'm at wrestling conventions and one person comes up to me and they go, Hey, did you ever meet Haystacks Calhoun? And I go, no, never had the opportunity. Oh, I saw him wrestle. As long as those guys are still around, we can have a product. As long as those guys are around because they know, they know. So, uh, listen, I had Roma leave an extensive voicemail for Tony Khan. Tony Khan won't listen. He won't listen. He could, right now is the time to strike. He can have the biggest company in the business. The biggest company. Won't listen. He won't listen. No matter how smart he is, no matter how much money he has, You, you, you have to have the brain for wrestling. And, he does. It's just message board, uh, Japanese, uh, you know, uh, 
wrestling mm-hmm. observer message board stuff and that that's not what uh that, that that's not wrestling either he actually he actually referenced cage match as a credible source for ranking matches now normally we we cage match is good for us jack when we can go back and we can search through people's history of nearly everything is documented on cage match it's great but uh, tony mario referenced how great the aew cage match ratings were a couple of weeks back yeah he just doesn't listen he just he just he just doesn't listen i don't know i don't know, I don't know. I don't know how much more money he wants to sink into it but i'm on their media team and he's granted me zero zero interview since i've been on there every single time i've done a press conference i never got to ask a question what's the fucking point in being on a media team just trying to throw that out there as well again holiday finally met him yeah uh in england oh he was in london at the football game last week with with darby allen and somebody else yeah yeah he finally he finally met him i said well how'd it go good good he liked my match we had a conversation I said, did he take your number? He goes, no, no. That was at Progress Wrestling, I think, wasn't it? In London. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Holiday was there for a week. So Mm -hmm. at least he met him face to face, you know. Yeah. Tony was out. Roma Roma was actually trying to get in there to write storylines. So I don't. Well, we're we're about at the hour and 16, 17 mark. Before we we wrap up this uh, another epic edition of the Mario Mancini show, I wanted to mention Mario that I did catch. Hey Roma, I I love the interplay between uh, you and Paul. You had a, a wide ranging discussion. Can can you just give the cheap eat fans uh, a little info about what you got cooking in that kitchen so to speak yeah but yeah roma and i started hey roma um it, it's on uh friday nights at like six o'clock we stream live for that show but the the first show we did was was tape and um it's not wrestling it's not just wrestling it's uh the military is going to be a big part of our show um, probably the focus of it, um, and we uh, we talk about a, a wider wide range of of, of topics and subjects. Um, we're Trump guys. We we made no bones about that. So whoever wants to tune out of that, they can. You know, I'm not going to apologize for it. But um, this country right now is. I don't know what to think anymore. You know, I I you know everybody here is waiting for the grid to get hit. Um, and us go back to like prehistoric times. I don't think anybody is looking at us as, as a powerful nation anymore because we, we don't have a leader that, you know, the old that. so, um, you know what I say to people and they don't have an answer for me. Well, Trump, this, I go, who do we have? Give me somebody, give me somebody, just give me somebody that we have. And they can't, they can't give me anybody that would, they know that would do a great job. I mean, a young girl in Georgia just got murdered, you know, by an illegal alien. And you know what? I was a big fan of Chris Cuomo on Fox. I love watching him. Never watch him again. I'll never watch him again. Because, and if I was that girl's father, I would have went down to that station and Gave him what for because he's like, yeah, uh, uh, an illegal committed murder. But there's more murders committed by people that were born here than any. I'm like, yes, I've heard that here the last year as well. You know what I mean? The point is, though, if he wasn't let in, she'd still be alive. You know what I mean? So you you gotta you gotta have a guy like Trump to get elected to go. Guess what? The first thing I'm doing, everybody out. Everybody out. I'm getting all you out. You know, um, 70,000 overdoses of fentanyl. 70,000 since 2021. 70,000 overdoses of fentanyl. So the, that's what that podcast is all about. And, and um, 
we go over wrestling, we're, you know, we're, we're probably going to massacre John Cena on Friday. Um, just, I don't know what he, you know, I don't know what he's thinking. I mean, I don't know. I, I, I don't, you know, there's something, there's something called, you know, I love you. What the fuck is wrong with you? What happened to that? What happened to that? That's been said before. Listen, I love you. I, I think you're great. But what the fuck were you thinking? What the, what's wrong with you? No? You just come out and say, listen, I love the guy and I'm standing by him. What if that was your daughter? Stand by him then? You did that to your daughter. You know? I have three of them. <laughs> it, 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 listen, the inside is jail. I don't think that's going to happen. I think it's going to be more of a civil thing. But if people come out that should come out about certain things, it will be. It will be. For sure. Just got to wait. So that's live on Friday, Mario? Yeah, we should be. Yeah, we shoot from here for my conference rooms because we have Wi-Fi here. You can't afford Wi-Fi at Paradise Alley. <laughs> so we, we do it here at the law firm. And um, and uh, uh, hopefully we'll be going live. We got to see if our producer, our producer couldn't make it last week because his car blew up. So um just use Streamyard, mario you don't need a producer just use this platform i have no idea how to do it it's point and click yeah. it's the industry standard you'll have no problems yeah well then i'll i'll talk to maurice i'll talk to him see i what do you just download it don't even need to download you just run it are you using a laptop right now? Yeah. Use that laptop. Move it around whatever way you need to sit sit on a couch, whatever you need to do, and just hit play. Create an account. That's it. Boom. Yeah, because we, we, we have the microphones and whole nine yards. Mm -hmm. You so just I, need to link it up to your YouTube channel. Um, I, don't you get your... I, don't, I don't have YouTube. Where does it air? Right now, we're using the producer's YouTube channel because you have to wait like a couple of weeks in order to stream on it once you create it. To go live, you do, I think. Yeah, you need to wait a couple yeah. of weeks. Yeah. Yeah. So. Okay. So it's a work in progress. We'll. Uh, Everything's a work, Jack. Everything's a work. <laughs> That's tremendous. <laughs> Well, we'll encourage the fans to look for it on Friday, notwithstanding all of that, and look forward to uh, all your upcoming um, multimedia appearances, sir. All right, let me. Uh, I'm going to go pull and, some rhomboids. And WrestleCon, you're appearing at WrestleCon with Brian Costello, Paul Roma, and who is the other one? Tugboat. Tugboat, I believe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, Brian Costello, me, Roman, Tugboat. I'll be in New Jersey on May 4th at the 80s Con for Tommy Fierro. Um, May 18th, I'll be in St. Louis. So, and then June 29th, eight days after my 58th birthday. That's amazing. Napanee, Ontario, Canada. Napanee, Ontario, Canada. Putting wrestling on the map once again. It's going to be a big deal. Well, make sure you stretch, Mario, and we will be sure to uh, find out how the training's going, etc., on the next edition of the very popular Mario Mancini show. But until next time, fans, that's it. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll catch you down the road. I'm late for class. I got to 